Inflation at the basic level is an increase in the prices of goods and services or a decrease in the purchasing power of money. However, the causes of inflation and the economic impacts of deflation and hyperinflation are generally symptoms of the underlying problems with the economy of a nation. So why do we have inflation in the first place? Whilst there will always be minor fluctuations in the value of things, why do they consistently seem to be slightly going up in price? Well, there are three major factors at play here. First is a general increase in demand for goods and services, which leads to upwards pressure in inflation. However, increased supply in goods and services can dampen this pressure. In general, though, increase in demand are greater than the increases in supply. Then there's a general increase in the cost for goods and services. So as raw materials extracted in the ground, new sources of raw materials need to be taken from deeper mines or from more extreme environments. Alternatively, plants are grown in less productive soil requiring more fertilizers and other measures to produce the same volume of crops. Finally, there's cost in wages, which sometimes thought as a built-in inflationary pressure. This inflation is often seen as a fairly constant factor. Workers want their wages at least to be able to purchase today what they could do yesterday. So those workers want their wages to match or exceed the current inflation rate. Increasing wages without an increase in productivity, of course, then leads to an increase in the cost of goods and services, then feeds back into the rate of inflation. Now, this sometimes can lead to a price wage spiral as wages drive up inflation, inflation drives up wages. If this increase gets out of hand, it can become a major headache for governments, which is where we come to the topic of hyperinflation. Now, when inflation is extremely rapid, the normal methods of government stabilising the inflation rate fail, and the country enters a period of hyperinflation. Now, there can be a number of different factors causing an economy to enter into a period of hyperinflation. But normally, the key driver is related to what's known as the money supply, the root cause of which is normally the government attempting to get out of economic difficulties by printing more money. It ends up creating more problems than it actually solves. The problem normally starts with the government having a large budget deficit, either from spending too much or collecting too little in taxes. Now, if the markets regard this budget deficit as far too large, they may assume that the government is going to have difficulty in repaying any debts they've run up. And so, as a result, they start to charge an increasing level of interest on the money they loan to the government. In order to get around this difficulty, some governments then start to print extra currency. The problem here is that unless the extra currency is supported by an increase in output of goods and services, it means that both nationally and internationally, the purchasing power of the existing money in circulation goes down. Now, on a local level, this means that the printing of money causes a spike in inflation. As inflation jumps, people start to spend their money whilst it still has some purchasing power. This again leads to a shortage of supply of goods, and an even more dramatic increase in prices for those goods that are still available. On an international level, means the exchange rate for any international currency deteriorates. So currency will be able to purchase fewer dollars, pounds, or whatever currency people are attempting to exchange it for. This then has two direct effects. Any imported goods become extremely expensive, and any external loans the government become increasingly expensive to pay back in that international currency, as well as any interest payments on those loans. These factors in turn mean that it's even more upwards pressure on inflation and the government deficit increases again as it tries to service the existing debt. The inflation continues upwards because people assume that prices will continue to rise. They empty their bank accounts of any savings as the interest rate on the savings is so much lower than the inflation rate. The savings are actually decreasing in value the longer they leave them in the bank. Then causes runs on banks makes it even more difficult for both the economy and, in particular, for the government to borrow any more money. At this stage, hyperinflation has normally come unstoppable by normal economic measures. 
Inflation can reach 1 million percent. And people could be taking wheelbarrows full of cash as soon as they've been paid, only to be able to purchase a single loaf of bread with their money. Generally now, the economy ceases to function in any meaningful way. The end result is normally some form of civil conflict, the removal of price controls or price subsidies for key commodities, or the creation or adoption of a new currency that the people can actually have some confidence in. The effects from a period of hyperinflation are normally an extended period of economic disruption as well as high unemployment. However, as well as governments trying to avoid hyperinflation, we should also be trying to avoid what appears to be the much more benign issue of deflation, with the costs and services decreases. At first glance, this situation seems to be quite a beneficial one, with each year prices for goods and services decreasing. However, unless it's accompanied by dramatic productivity improvements, it can have some serious repercussions for an economy. Deflation generally occurs when there's an increase in output through automation or some other method without a corresponding increase in per people purchasing goods and services. So with more goods chasing fewer customers, prices fall in order to sell the increased amount of goods being produced. Problems start to occur if deflation continues for an extended period of time. The longer deflation continues, people tend to cut back on purchasing items, especially those high value goods. The longer they hold off their purchase, the cheaper the items likely become. In addition, businesses cut back on investment since holding on to cash is actually more profitable than investing in companies. In addition, any new machinery is likely to become cheaper the longer they wait. This in turn can lead to an increase in unemployment levels and a decrease in wages, then results in people being even more reluctant to spend their savings as their future becomes increasingly uncertain. The government can try to cut interest rates, what's known as quantitative easing, However, when interest rates get near to zero, there's very little more that governments can do on interest rates. The other option the government normally has is to take some form of stimulus spending, normally on large infrastructure projects such as roads, bridges, hospitals, large projects which involve employing substantial numbers of people and re-energising the economy. However, a careful balance needs to be struck here as the government can overstoke the economy, leading to an overheating of the economy and inflation going too high. The risks of both hyperinflation and deflation normally why many developed economies set a target inflation rate at about 2%. It just keeps the economy ticking over quite nicely.